<clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the first of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, mayor of the city of Beach Grove, and at this time we will convene our board of our excuse me, our board of sanitation for Monday, May the 4th, 2015. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves beginning <coughs> on my far right. Ed Bell. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. You have been presented uh, a copy of the printed minutes of the previous meeting dated Monday, April the 20th, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. I have none. I have none. No corrections, comments, or changes. I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. Tonight, board, we have uh, four pages of claims in the amount of $108,959.45. The floor is open for questions or comments. I do have one question. And, and Dan, that's for you. Um, I noticed on here that Covanta, we haven't paid them since October. Right. Uh, Brad, would you like to explain what happened on that? Yeah, they, uh, they switched their billing system over to something new. And in the process, uh, they were supposed to start generating those by email. And they had the wrong emails and names were spelled wrong. And so we weren't getting any invoice. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Mm-hmm. Any other questions or comments from board members? No. I have none. If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve the wastewater claims dated May the 4th, 2015, in the amount of $108,959.45. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I also vote aye and the motion carries. Board, we have no unfinished business from the previous meeting and we have no new business. Uh, comments from board members? None tonight. I have none. If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. The meeting, <coughs> meeting is adjourned at 6.03 p.m. We will reconvene at 6 p.m. on Monday, May the 18th. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the second of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, and at this time we will convene our Board of Public Works and Safety meeting for Monday, May the 4th, 2015. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves, beginning on my far right. Ed Bell. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. You have been presented a printed copy of the minutes of the previous meeting dated Monday, April the 20th, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. I have none. None this evening. No questions, comments, or corrections. I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting as presented. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I also vote aye and the motion carries. Board, uh, this evening we have uh, 28 pages of corporate claims in the amount of $691,589.42. The floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. Thank you. I have none this evening. No questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to approve the corporate claims dated May the 4th, 2015, in the amount of $691,589.42. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. Under unfinished business this evening, we have two items. The first is the bid award for recycling. 
Uh, Brad, can you uh, present this for us, please? Dear Board of Public Works and Safety, after reviewing all three bids for recycling, I'm recommending that Ray's Trash Service be awarded the bid for the Hornet Recycling Program in the City of Beach Grove. Should the Board of Public Works and Safety approve the bid from Ray's Trash Service, we will begin working towards implementation of recycling on August 1st. Floor is open for questions or comments. I do have questions. How will this program work? <laughs> Um, and, and also Mr. Davidson from Race Trash is here to answer uh, questions as well. But uh, basically it will be bi-weekly. Uh, residents will receive a 96-gallon tote. We have a meeting, I believe, next week where we are going to begin to hammer out a lot of the details of implementation. But uh, ultimately we're looking to gain as much participation as possible. And the program, I'm sure, we have, will evolve over time. I mean, uh, there's questions like, will people over time be allowed to get more than one tote, things like that. That's things we'll work through when we meet with Ray's. Um, and the city absorbs the cost. Was there any other questions? Awesome. Or? That was my next question. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Ray uh, or Calvin, do you want to come up and say a couple words on behalf of uh, Donnie Matthews? Thank you. Uh, my name is Calvin Davidson, Ray's Trash Service, and just want to say thanks to the city for uh, giving us the opportunity. It was a little bit of a different kind of bid in the way that the, the numbers came out and the per ton cost. So we were kind of intrigued with the process, but uh, looking very forward to serving the community and becoming more, more ingrained, I guess, more part. Um, I know recently the city of Columbus, Indiana, is doing the same thing we did. How is that working? Uh, it's working very well. I think they found that uh, they're quite surprised with the amount of participation. There were some naysayers early on that predicted they would be lucky to get 25% participation. Uh, their, their program was a little different and they, they allowed residents to sign up prior to the uh, distribution of the carts. So only the people that requested them received them. And they're already above 50%, just right about the 50% or a little over 50%. So they're they're cheering pretty hard, and that's actually, by today's standards, really good participation for a, a, a voluntary program. Okay, any other questions from uh, board members or comments? I'm pretty excited about this because we are big recyclers, and I just, just, I remember last year when we had the middle school kids that came in. Did they have a big part in this? Yeah, they, they're, the, they're actually the ones who wrote the program. Kudos to the, our kiddos in Beach yeah. Grove. That's that's a good thing. So. That's Let's good. I read on a fifth grade level, so it's all. <laughs> <laughs> You're ahead of us. Yeah. Hey, if you keep it simple, people will participate. Yeah. And that's the, the name of the game is educate, educate, and keep it simple. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Any other comments or questions? Um, I do have just one more question. So with recycling, are, are we going to have like the same pickup that we do on our normal trash day, Brad, or will that be separate? Yeah, I mean, that's something we'll work through. I think uh, that would be ideal, and that's probably what we'll shoot for. Uh, like I said, it's biweekly, so it won't be <coughs> weekly like the current trash, but we'll definitely um, try to keep it on the same day if we can. That's obviously, you know, very helpful to the people that are participating. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, Brad, I have. Sure. Uh, he left with educate, educate. Oh. I assume we're going to have a education before August uh, for the community. Yeah, it was built into the uh, the RFP that there's a certain amount of educational materials that are put out prior to the program starting, and then I think every six months okay. uh, we're going to put something out to remind people, to educate people, to continue to uh, keep everybody up to speed <coughs> as to what's going on. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Brad. Yeah. Uh, if there's uh, not any more questions or comments, I'll ask for a motion to approve the request from the Public Works Director for uh, Raised Trash Service for recycling in the City of Beach Grove. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. And Calvin, there are 
We have a, uh, I know we meet on the 13th, but the next day, May the 14th, Thursday at 11.30 is the chamber launch and the presentation on recycling. So if you could join me, I would, I would very much appreciate it. I'll, I'll get with you on that. All right, thank you. Next order of business is a bid award for Bellefontaine project. At this time, I will defer to the clerk to read this into the record, please. Dear Mayor Buckley, we have enclosed certified bid tabulations for the bid proposals received at the Board of Public Works and Safety meeting held on April the 20th, 2015 for the reference project. There were a total of three bids submitted. All bids received were <laughs> accurate and all required documentation was provided. The lowest bid was $270,130.20 from Midwest Paving. The engineer's estimate for this project was $301,521.21. Based on a thorough review of the information received, it is our recommendation that Midwest Paving be awarded the construction contract for this project. All right, thank you. Floor is open for our, well, out, let me introduce Bill Hall. Bill, can you discuss uh, Bell Fountain for us, please? Yes, we're excited to get this, see this project get going. I drove through it again tonight. It's, it's in very bad shape. Um, so the project will involve complete milling out of all the existing pavement and then putting back uh, crushed stone and then uh, four inches of asphalt on top of that. So it'll be a complete uh, rebuild of the street. It's in pretty desperate need of repair. Well, I'm excited about it too since it's in my district and I get a lot of calls on that so they're getting excited about Good. it. Getting it done. <clears throat> uh, this also includes the uh, repair of the parking lot at the Horner Park Community Center and at the senior centers. Yes. Oh, those are getting bad too. Uh, patching in both places and then uh, do, doing the best we can to repair a drainage problem at, at Hornet Park. Floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. I have none. Uh, no questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to uh, approve the recommendation from United concerning Midwest paving and Bell Fountain. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. Any contracts to bring forward? <coughs> yes, I have a contract that will be between the city and Midwest. And if we could get the city to sign that, then I'll work on getting the contractor signature. Then we can get a notice to proceed and get the project moving. All right. That concludes unfinished business for this evening. Under new business, we have several items. Uh, the first one is Methodist Church shuttle request. I'd sent them a um, master vendor application, have not received it back yet, so we'll table this until uh, I receive the uh, vendor's uh, information concerning the Methodist Church. So that will be tabled. The next item in new business is bid opening for the senior citizens bus, and I'll defer to uh, board member Sandy Sewer to open the bids, please. 
Okay, the first bid is from Mid America Coach. And the total price, $64,336. Again, $64,336. The next bid is from Carpenter Bus Sales. And this quote is $69,400. The next one's from Tesco. Transportation equipment sales. And the bid is for $65,858. $65,858. And the last one. Is from Midwest Transit Equipment. And the amount of the bid is $51,203. $51,203. And that is all of the bids. All right, thank you. Uh, we open the bids. We will not make a decision. We will take them under review, and we will uh, reconvene this matter at the next board meeting on May 18th. Andy, thank you very much. You're welcome. Next order of business is Master Vendor's License Application concerning uh, law publications, ADS Company Incorporated. And Chief Mark, could you come up and discuss this one? This one says the description of business or activity is selling sponsorship to business for Beach Grove Police Department. This is a vendor. I talked to him once. It's a salesman, and they, what I understand is that they go to businesses and solicit advertisement for magazines that uh, the police can use as far as child safety, bicycle safety, gun safety, and uh, drug safety. And the advertisements, I think, are associated with those magazines that the kids take and parents can see that businesses support 
different different things that go on. The books can be given to Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, or put into schools, as I understand how the program runs. Besides this, besides this company, who benefits? Does anybody here benefit? The benefit, as I understand, the company benefits probably by selling the ads, and the other benefit is the magazines are coloring books that go to the kids in the uh, in the community. Their activity, uh, coloring books or information books about safety. All right, thanks, Chief. Floor is open for questions or comments. <clears throat> So it'd be my understanding the police department would buy these no. and then pass them out to the uh, how I understand it from the one meeting I had is that this company solicits different businesses to advertise and then that company gives the activity books to the police department to give out to uh, whoever we choose. Uh, what organization we want them to want to have Are these activity books is that something that, we, <clears throat> that you guys could do on your own we can purchase them on our own yes okay. well not from this company but no we, but from a vendor yes from different vendors we purchase them huh. um, no, don't go ahead I'm gonna throw this out there I'm not too much on this I have questions too because it says <coughs> selling sponsorship to businesses for the Beach Grove Police Department. <laughs> so is, I mean that's their that's their what they're saying their description of their business is for the Beach Grove Police Department. It's if that's it's a play on words. They asked me to sign a letter and send it to them, and I wouldn't <laughs> do that because the police I will not support them going out. I I have no problem with them soliciting as long as they get the permit. But I, it's the police department didn't go after them to do this. I'm not going to support this, uh, Counselor. I don't know about you. That's why I was kind of confused I'm if you're going to be either. buying these oh, or not. So, thanks, Chief. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to to deny the application request. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye. Thank you. Next order of business is resignation within the fire department chief. Before you comment, I'll ask the clerk to read this into the record, Dan. Chief Cheshire, please accept <coughs> this email as notification that I am resigning my position with the Beach Grove Fire Department, effective May 14, 2015 at 7 a.m., Kerry Fitzgerald. Thank you. Chief, can you uh, elaborate on this, please? Uh, yes, Carrick is uh, retiring from the fire department, and I well, would request from this board for approval to go ahead and, and start on the replacement of his position. Uh, this breaks my heart. Um, questions or comments from board members? I have none. If not, I'll ask for a motion to accept the resignation of Kerry Fitzgerald. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I also vote aye and the motion carries. I'll ask for a motion from this same board to allow the chief to proceed to replace Kerry, his position. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I also vote aye and the motion carries. Chief, please proceed. So. Okay, thank you. All right. Next uh, on the agenda is NDOT agreement between the City of Beach Grove and NDOT for the Churchman Avenue sidewalks. Bill, are you prepared to <clears throat> talk about that? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know, but I, I'm, I can probably address any questions. Yeah, can you give us an update on what's going on with the Churchman Avenue sidewalks? Well, um, of course, the project was uh, rec uh, awarded funding by the state. <laughs> So the, they call this the LPA state agreements, one of the requirements that they have before they'll issue a, uh, well, move forward with the project and issue a, a PO to fund the, or to provide for the federal funds to be utilized by the city. So that's the agreement that specifies how all that works. 
And this is the same uh, uh, project that the RDC has uh, funded this year and will go year by year uh, for the next three years to, uh, to determine whether they want to fund it or not. But it's fully funded this year. Um, and I think they've already begun surveying, and then, uh, then we'll have to enter an agreement to be the uh, for the LPA. Is that right? Well, you have an agreement between the city and United to do the design, uh -huh. and then this will be your agreement between the city and NDOT. They are the um, how's the what's the right the um, administrator of the federal funds. So they'll be looking over the project and all the processes and make sure everything goes just right so you stay in the right position to keep qualified to use those federal funds. Brad, did you want to comment on this? Brad is more directly involved in this than any of us. Uh, we had the early coordination meeting last week. Don't sign it yet because you have to use blue ink. Very important, <laughs> they told me. They will, they will reject it if you do not sign it blue ink. So I brought two blue ink pens. Yeah, it's basically a boilerplate like we've done in the past, and it's our agreement like we did with United. It's basically with the NDOT that says, you know, this is how the con construction and everything will go, that they're funding, um, and it's standard. It's the same with each one. So sign two copies. I'll take one, and then you guys can keep the other one. I don't even. Brad, do you know if they've got the Dunn's number on here already? Uh, we have to put it on there. Okay. All right. And I think you probably have that. If not, yes, I do, I do have okay. it. Okay. It's on page 11 of 11. And at this time, does the board have any questions or comments I on don't. this? Uh, no questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to approve the <coughs> project coordination agreement with the Indiana Department of Transportation concerning Churchman Avenue sidewalks. I'll make, I'll make said mo motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. Today is the fourth. Yes. Uh, yeah, Sandy and Ann. And I'll bring this pen down to you, Ed. Hang on, Ed. You got blue? Yeah. One more, Sandy. 
Oh, pin back. Ed or Brad, hang on a minute, please. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get them thrown back at us. I can assure you. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thanks. Yep. Dad, you want to keep one of these? Uh, I can. We're going to have to put Dunn's number on both yeah. of them. I've got that Dunn's number. So I can okay. Put, put it on that one and I'll put it on this they one here. Copy, so keep that one in case for some reason they reject it. Right. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Brad. It does happen. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, board. Last order of new business is change order two and three concerning the Hartman Park parking lot um, construction. I'll defer to Brent Siebenthal. Brent, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, change order two covered uh, the bringing in of some additional stone and also the removal of some additional soil. Uh, what happened was while they were doing the uh, rough grading um, due to weather conditions, they did not use some of the material, the soil that was intended to be uh, compacted and, and placed at another part of the site. And so that resulted them having excess material uh, to be re disposed of and then also some additional crushed stone that needed to be brought in. Change order three was uh, based upon the fact that Phil and the contractor had, uh, had been noticing in the northwest corner of the parking lot uh, where the aggregate had been placed in an area where it, that would just not dry out. And we went out and looked at it Friday and you could actually see water bubbling up through the aggregate. And so water is coming from north of the lot and traveling through a sand seam or something like that and bubbling up. And so in order to get that area dried out, and our thought was, you know, over time that may very well take care of itself because we have put in drainage out there. Um, the concern was them not being able to dry that area out in time uh, uh, that they need to place the asphalt. And then the other concern is if it doesn't take care of itself over time, then there's a risk of the freeze thaw underneath the pavement uh, long term and damaging the pavement. So it was decided to go ahead and allow the contractor to install about 300 feet of under drain uh, in order to dry that area out. And uh, per fill, the under drain took care of the bulk of the problem and they went ahead and paved today. So they have the base down and then they will have the surface uh, to do and then the striping. And I think that project's gonna be about complete. Floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. The total uh, increase to the contract amount from change order one, two, and three is just under $17,000 or a little over 5% of the original construction cost. A couple things. Um, one of the board members uh, asked me before the meeting about, well, wasn't this factored in the job? Why wasn't this factored in the job when the <coughs> job was... Taken. Okay, and I tried to explain to the person was that you weren't we weren't aware of this that there was a water issue within the mm. subgrade until it exposed itself. That is correct. Now, what we could have done is during the design phase, although there wasn't much time, was hire a geotechnical firm, pay them three to five thousand dollars, and have them do some exploratory drilling out there. That may have not found the problem. Uh, I think the fact that it took that mass earthwork to, to, to find the problem. And then the other thing is normally we don't design under drain systems under parking lots. We could have for this project, it would have added thirty to forty thousand dollars to the project cost. So the rest of the lot is dry. Everything's good. It was just that one little area where we've got some funny business going on where the groundwater is traveling uh, to the uh, site from the north and bubbling up. And also, we had an issue with the property to the north of that with the natural drain that flows from that property that we had to, as part of this change order as well. Yes, uh, change order two uh, covered a small fee for them to extend a four-inch drain, which is on the property to the north, but the pipe was buried out in the parking lot, so we did not know it was there when we did our survey. It was until the contractor started digging that they found it. But that's, now that's... Is so the change order two uh, included them extending that drain to the uh, storm drainage system, to one of the storm uh, inlets out there. And if, if we wouldn't have put that under drain in Friday and we paved, and, and we just left it alone and paved the lot, what, what is the chance that we take? 
Well, the chance you take is that, uh, I mean, you want the uh, aggregate nice and dry before they do the paving. So number one, you'd have a soft spot that immediately the asphalt may settle. Uh, down the road, you run the issue of water uh, getting under the asphalt layer and freezing and thawing, causing heave, resulting in the asphalt cracking. So it's exposed and we do it right. Fix yes. It, do it right. These, these things you can, if you want to try and design for these, you're going to pay a lot more. Uh, rather, we were fortunate, just they did the work and found it and took care of it during construction. Okay, any other questions or comments from board members? First one we'll do is change order number two. I'll, need, I'll ask for a motion to approve the change order in the amount of $7,697. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. Change order number three, I'll ask for a motion to approve change order number three in the amount of $5,560.80. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. Thank you. Brent, I'll go ahead and sign these and <coughs> get these back to you. Here's three, and here's two. Thank you. Thank you. Brent, thank you. Well done. Thank you. That concludes new business this evening. Comments from board members? I have none this evening. I have a couple. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Tomorrow's vote day, so make sure you vote. <clears throat> and also, um, thanks again to the um, Beautify Beach Grove and DPW for those beautiful flags that are up and down 9th Street. 9th Street. So that looks really nice. So thank you for that. Okay. And also I have one question for Brad. Um, someone brought to my attention at the Little League Parade as they were crossing 9th Street there by the school, that crosswalk is not working properly or it's working one way and not the other? The lights, the actual lights. I, I, I get secondhand information. Okay, I'll check it out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right, no other questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. The meeting is adjourned at 6.42 p.m. The city council will convene at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the third and final meeting this evening. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. At this time, we will convene our Common Council meeting for Monday, May the 4th, 2015. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves, beginning on my left. Dave Mobley, Council Mount Large. John Jennings, District 4. Dave Harrison, District 5. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Anthony Davidson, District 3. Ed Bell, District 2. Kathy Coates, Council at Large. Thank you, Council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic 
for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a couple presentations this evening. Uh, the first one is we would like to recognize Joanne Brewington as the Substitute Teacher of the Year. Joanne, could you step forward, please? Anybody you'd like to call up as well? This is my husband, Ron. For uh, council members and uh, the general or the audience, uh, I call her Joanne. Josephine Brewington was nominated uh, either by Kelly or by the school district? By both. By both. By both. For a substitute teacher's award, uh, she substitute teaches at South Grove Intermediate School, and not only is she received the state substitute teacher of the year, she received the national substitute teacher of the year. Of all the schools in this country, she is awarded the substitute teacher of the year. And I think that's commendable, and I think we should recognize her not only as a school district, but as a city. So, Joanne, uh, congratulations, 2015 State and National Substitute Teacher of the Year. Well deserved. Well, I'd just like to say thank you very much. Um, it, is, it is, it's a great honor. Um, just to be chosen locally here within our own school district. You know, we have an amazing school district, and I love working with our children in our school district and our teachers. And um, if it wasn't for the teachers, um, they're the ones that did recommend me to Kelly Services, and um, I appreciate that. I feel honored that they want me in their school system, working with them day by day, working with their children. Um, I currently am at South Grove every day this year, helping them. Um, as their TAP support sub. I've worked through all the schools, though. I've been through kindergarten, through the high school in the last five or six years, except for the short time that I did work for um, City Hall. Um, but I tell you, it's a joy. It's a joy to go to work every day and have the people there want you to be there and respect you and just like the job that you're doing for them. And it, it is, it's not like a job. I told um, all the teachers, you know, it's not like going to work every day. I get to go in and I get to have fun and um, get to spend time, you know, just trying to do a good job for them in their classrooms. So, and like I said, just to even be honored just here locally in Beach Grove was great, but I, I just can't, there's not even any words to know that I was recognized nationally um, by Kelly Services and my two bosses are out here, Angie and Tiffany are here in the audience that helped get me that that award there for national substitute teacher of the year and the teachers at South Grove I mean we had they told me you know there's like over 30 letters from teachers and the students the students wrote letters for me too so I just appreciate that they all enjoy having me there because I really it, it is it's not like a job at all I just really enjoy working there every day so thank you very much for um, recognizing me here too so thank you one one more thing, uh, if you truly know Joanne, uh, you'll, you know that uh, she's a really good substitute teacher, but she's a better person. So congratulations. And we'll see you on May 18th, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank All right. You. The next uh, special presentation is a Greenscape, Greenscape Commission 10-year award. I'll ask uh, a member of our Greenscape Commission uh, to come forward, Stuart Wilson, and our council president, if you could step to the podium for a presentation. <coughs> come up, Stuart. Ed? Uh, this growth award is uh, the Arbordeo Foundation's award for 10 years of being recognized as Tree City USA community. Um, 
<coughs> the communities must have a tree board on their department. They have to have a tree ordinance, care ordinance, a uh, comprehensive community forest program with an annual expenditure and an Arbor Day observance and proclamation. And our Arbor Day observance will be in October uh, this year. But this is an award we have for doing this for 10 years. And I'd like to give this to you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Stuart. And if you could come back up, you took my agenda with you. <laughs> and now the last special presentation is a small presentation concerning Keep Indianapolis Beautiful. Anyway, thanks for having me here today. What I want to do is come talk a little bit about uh, Keep Indianapolis Beautiful, okay? And I want to talk about the Adopt the Block program. Uh, Keep Indianapolis Beautiful Helpful has several projects uh, throughout Indianapolis. They were established in 1976, and uh, they changed their name from Indianapolis Clean City to Keep Indianapolis Beautiful in 1997. They're a nonprofit organization, and the, the programs they have they have a community forestry program, Green Space Commission, like uh, we do, because they go around and try to find vacant lots to make it look beautiful. They've done things in Fletcher, Fountain Square, different areas of the city. But what we've done, we've worked with over 30,000 volunteers this year. And it's been sort of fun for me because there was 500 different projects that I got to be involved with as an intern with this organization. And the thing that I have to do now is with the community engagement part of it, is try to find people to adopt a block to keep the city and Marion County beautiful. And 2002 is when this particular program started out. And in 2011, just to give you an idea of how much it's grown, we only had 200 adopt the block captains who had adopted their own blocks within Marion County. Uh, last year, we had 750. This year, we plan on having 900, just to give you an idea how much it's grown. But when I was looking at the map for the city of Indianapolis, which includes us in Marion County, there was something missing. And there was a big blank space as far as the adopt the block programs in the city of Beach Grove. So being on the Green Space Commission and then caring about the city like I do, I thought it would be a nice program to be involved with. And I came here to try to get the city council and the city of Beach Grove support today. So the, what I have there, I gave you, were litter grabbers, okay? But one of the reasons that uh, we should get involved with this is it's the community engagement part of it, uh, the cleanliness and beauty to the streets of Beach Grove. Today we did a bigger scale, the downtown Indianapolis, but if we just look at each individual block in the city of Indianapolis and in, in the city of Beach Grove, I mean, you can see how much more easier it would be to maintain. You know, you get the community involved, you get the community caring, and they take pride in their neighborhood. You know, the community engagement alone is... I cut my grass yesterday, uh, but my neighbor hadn't cut his for two weeks. Well, today he put fertilizer, he did all sorts of stuff to his yard today, even planted flowers. 
wonderful, wonderful thing. I think I motivated him, I think, to do a really good job. And I think that's when we get a, a, a block captain who cares about the neighborhood, they can actually walk around to the neighbors and get the neighborhoods involved, the neighbors involved. And, you know, if it takes a daily thing to do to walk out in the public spaces and just pick up trash, whether it's cigarette butts, whether it's cans, litter, whatever it is on the streets, get together weekly, possibly do this, or even get together monthly with your neighbors and try to get your neighbors to help you walk through the block. You know, it only takes probably three or four hours a month, possibly, to even get involved in something like this. You know, the city of Beach Grove does a wonderful job keeping the streets clean the way it is, but there's still stuff thrown all over the place anyway. And just the example that we do as far as this is concerned, as far as beautifying the neighborhood, uh, <coughs> Keeping Indianapolis Beautiful does a rating system on the neighborhoods uh, two times a year, and the scale is one to four, one being really good, four being not so good. Uh, but what they do is anybody who scores a two or a one, they will actually give them flowers to plant on their block, okay, or on the captain's house, whatever the captain wants to do with it. But something that everybody's involved with, they can get up to 20 trees per block from keeping Annapolis beautiful uh, each year, you know. So it's a really nice program to have on that. Uh, Another thing that's really important to this is not only does it contribute to the environment with the trees and the, and the plants, and then it, what it does is teaches children that are involved in our communities right now about beautification of our neighborhood, taking pride of our neighborhood, and then it teaches them a little bit about the environment, and I think that's just very, very important. Um, on the captains that are needed for each block, uh, you know, they lead, uh, they cooperate daily picking up trash, you know, they share information, and they have a larger vision of looking for green space areas and, com and community forestry projects. Uh, we actually had um, the principal of the middle school this week actually apply for a grant with, for the community forestry program here in Beach Grove to see if we can do something over there with the new sidewalk that just got built from Detroit all the way over to the school on the sidewalk, plant trees, you know, a really nice thing to do, but it all had to do with what Keep Indianapolis Beautiful is trying to do as far as keeping the city of Indianapolis clean. Um, as a captain, they actually give you a starter kit, which includes brooms, shovels, trash bags, litter grabbers, if you want, the handbook, door hangers, and they give you a t-shirt, you know, sort of nice, you know, a captain shirt. Um, part, of the, part, part of it is also about graffiti-free Indianapolis, which is, they will actually provide the paint, the brushes, rollers, and trays for our community if there's a lot of graffiti going on in the neighborhood. Um, but the, the big thing about this is that I think it requires a two-year commitment on somebody's part. Um, and like I said, the trees are given, the plants are given. There's an appreciation dinner done every year. And what's important as far as the training, the workshops, social events, and all the stuff that goes with it by being a part of the, doc, the block program, um, if we have three block captains within a certain area that wants to, there's something called a block improvement grant with uh, Keeping Indianapolis Beautiful this year, and they will actually give the three captains $500 to have a block party, to do whatever they want to with that money as far as trying to improve the neighborhood. So it's just a really, really good organization, and uh, I would just like to thank you for allowing me to speak on this Part. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy. I do have applications if you would like to fill one out. It's a real easy process, or anybody else in the audience would like to as well. Question from council members? I'm sure we're going to get phone calls about this, so I'd like to have a couple applications. And if we could get this to the website, so this is easy as it sounds, because this is it's a, incredible. The way I look at it, it's a win-win. It costs yeah. nothing to do. I mean, they love contributions, of course. I mean, that's <coughs> everybody does. But uh, it's a win-win for anybody who's involved with it because it costs any, no money, and it only takes about four hours of your time each month to even actually keep the streets clean. So, but I do have applications, okay? And the website is on the application, and uh, they can actually go online and actually fill out the application right. if they like to. I'm hoping to get a link from the Beach Grove City website yes. to your website. And as you said, the best thing about this is if you sign up as adults, as you sign up as parents, you your kids see it. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys that likes to challenge my kids to do something like I do. Because who in the world ever thought that I'd be a councilman for eight years? But I did because my kids had to see that this is what you do. You volunteer, you step up, and you do something. Well, you know, so, what's really important, too, about this, I actually went to the appreciation dinner because they had that at Tech High School this year in March. 
and uh, three of the adopted block captains are actually uh, children probably 14 years old. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's a lot of high school kids that need community service, and I'm sure we could somehow tie this in. Yeah. Just since we have administration sitting here, I thought I'd say that. <laughs> Anything else? Um, oh, <clears throat> the last thing I wanted to tell you, too, as you do this, if you want to, they will actually put a sign like that on your block showing that you are part of the <clears throat> Keep Indianapolis Beautiful Project Adopt the Block program. And if, say, for instance, the mayor wanted to adopt this right now and put it in front of the city county building, which he could, um, he, we could actually put the city council or the name down here on a plaque right underneath the sign would say who that was contributed by. So if the block captain wanted their name on it or somebody in the neighborhood or they wanted to recognize somebody special in their neighborhood, they could actually put this in a plaque on the bottom of the sign that's on the street. <coughs> One uh, thing I wanted to mention to you, the first month of street sweeping that we just completed, the company collected 147 tons of debris from our city streets, just the city streets. That was a staggering amount of debris. So, yes, it's very relevant. I found myself today downtown picking up cigarette butts telling people uh, that this wasn't their public <laughs> ashtray after I was done, after I saw them do that. So, <laughs> but no, I understand. And I understand that things do happen, but it's just important for us to keep the city beautiful. Yep. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Mayor Ballard's liaison here this evening. If not, uh, we'll move to uh, council. You've been uh, presented a printed copy of the previous minute meeting. Dated <coughs> Monday, April 6, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. Mayor, I wasn't here for our last meeting, so if we could, could we have uh, Dan read it all mm. back in? <laughs> I have read and understand the April 6th me meeting minutes. I would like to have them accepted as written. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Public comments, uh, Councilor? Yes, nobody has spoken, signed up to speak. Anybody would like to speak? If not, we'll move to committee reports. Youth Council, our principal is here this evening of the high school, Mr. Cox. Steve? I'd like to start by saying, you know, thanks for uh, letting us come every, every month. Usually it's a student. Uh, from our student advisory team, uh, but today you get me. They're all study at home studying for an AP exam, so so uh, I told them I'd come tonight. I'd like to start by saying to Joanne again, uh, she's been a blessing to Beach Grove City Schools. Um, if you've never been a substitute, I don't think you have any idea of all the good, the bad things that could happen in, in one particular day. And she's been a real trooper for Beach Grove City Schools. So uh, a month ago. I said to her in a, at a board meeting that she's just been a God blessing to us all, and she really has, and, and she deserves any accolades that she gets because of all hard, the hard work she does. Uh, at Beach Grove, we've come up with, uh, at the high school, we also have another commu uh, communication um, device. Uh, through Twitter, we have our own uh, high school account, and it's called Grover the Hornet, and it's for students and parents. And what, uh, it goes along with uh, what we do at the district level with all the uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook and accounts that we have. But at the high school, again, it, it's just called at Grover the Hornet, and we do a lot of things on there just related to students and parents, uh, taking pictures of students in the classroom, any things that they're, they're going on with baseball teams, choir, band, any of those types, types of things. So we hope everybody joins us there. A um, couple things at, at your position. There's a couple of these floating around. Um, and I'll pass this around as you can see. I think Mayor has a couple of them too. Uh, one of the things in the state of Indiana is uh, pathways. Educationally, what that really talks about <coughs> is, is trying to create opportunities for students to get a path of learning at a, at a younger age. 
we want to start down into the fourth, fifth, sixth grade as far as providing opportunities for students to really get an idea of what it takes to be an engineer, what's it take to be a doctor, or what is it you want to do if you if you're study science a lot or if you want to be in mathematics. And so uh, as you flip through there, there's like 10 different pathways for the state of Indiana, and we've created several ourselves. Uh, and a student has to, if they get on a pathway, they're really looking at going to C9 possibly to be part of their pathway completion or uh, dual credit with Ivy Tech or Vincennes or, or Indiana University. Uh, but we started that, uh, and that's that little flyer that we put out that we've, we're uh, in the process of getting uh, mass produced to give to everybody that wants to uh, work on a pathway. The other part of that that we came up with is uh, Karen Matthews and Bruce Bai have been working on a career connections pathway. And this has worked out, it's kind of spawned from that, but this has been really interesting that what's occurred is we have an activity block in the middle of the day at Beach Grove High School. And so Bruce has been setting up with different types of professionals uh, that might want to, um, uh, uh, that would come in and talk to our students. It kind of happened with uh, Tommy Pick, one of our one of our, our, our class president, actually senior class president. Tommy was in, is really interested in business and math, but he also kind of likes agriculture. And so um, he went down. He just drove down to the National uh, FFA <coughs> convention in Louisville and, and and started looking around, seeing what was going there. And then that sparked this idea of bringing in professionals that even though he's never going to be a farmer, so to speak, or he's not going to be in ag science, he wants to be in math and business, but tied to possibly um, agriculture. And so this started the whole pathway process of bringing professionals in from the outside all around Indianapolis and the state of Indiana to Beach Grove High School during the day for about a half hour to 45 minute sit down discussion with a few students about, about different job opportunities uh, outside of high school and college. So that's been a great um, avenue for us at the high school this year. The other thing I wanted to touch base with is this right here. This is called the images in Beach Grove. I was down. Have you seen these things? This, this is just great. Uh, let me see if I can go pass that around. Uh, I just happened to be down at, at Border <coughs> Books, and I was looking at stuff, and I saw that book, and I bought um, 10 of them, one for each one of our department heads. And so the department heads got those books, they've looked at them, and then they've given them to teachers inside their uh, department, because really what we want to do is we want to mesh Beach Grove into our curriculum. And so uh, a lot of the things that are in there are just great things about Beach Grove. I couldn't believe it. And so we're trying to tie Beach Grove again into our curriculum, and, and all our teachers are really looking into that. So that's been a great thing. A couple other things at the high school that are going on, we've uh, made a uh, partnership with um, IU uh, ACP courses for dual credit in English, chemistry, and calculus next year. Uh, we also have business management and personal finance through IU. Um, we have an Ivy Tech course we're adding that's called College, and Re uh, College Readiness. And we're also going to uh, create another pathway that's called uh, Next Tech. Uh, this is a, a pathway for, for computer science. And there's tremendous amount of jobs out in the world for uh, computer science, but they don't have enough people that, that are qualified. And so we've, uh, we've uh, joined forces with Next Tech, which is, uh, was um, Exact Target, owned them at one point in time. And all this training they're giving us is free. And so we're going to try to open up an opportunity for students that want to be into uh, um, uh, computer science, actually writing code and that sort of thing. Uh, the last thing I wanted uh, to throw out to you is uh, this. Uh, we've hooked up with some photographers that we take pictures like this of, of all our sports. This happens to be football uh, for this year. And uh, we do it for basketball, uh, choir, band, everything. And at the high school, what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna make three of them per season. We'll have a fall season, a winter season, and a spring season. And then we're going to have these uh, uh, put in uh, <coughs> encased, I guess, so they don't get torn up, and we're going to mount them on the wall. So each year we're going to be adding down the wall uh, each year about per season. Um, some of our students are going to want to buy these things from by their particular sport, uh, but we're doing it by season for the high school, and this has just been a great, another opportunity for get get pictures of students and activities going on and then get them out to anybody that wants them, uh, which has been a great thing. With you, I've uh, at your position, I gave you this right here. Uh, it's a calendar for the month of May. 
all the things that are going on at the high school for a month of May and the different types of award programs and final exams and all the things that are happening, commencement and baccalaureate and all those sort, sort of things. But on the back side, uh, today, matter of fact, the HSAA uh, just uh, finalized the realignment uh, for all sports for next year. So um, you're one of the first people to ever see uh, where, we're, where we're going from Beach Grove High School for all the sports sectionals that will be happening in state, uh, for the state of Indiana. So uh, in closing, I gave you a lot of information pretty quick. Uh, but again, it's just a pleasure that you give us the opportunity to come talk to you and kind of share what, what's happening at the high school. Uh, we. Uh, we have tremendous students, tremendous kids, as you know, um, and probably a, a, one of the things that uh, kind of as an example of that is, is our community service. Last week, uh, the 22nd, was our second community service day uh, this year. Uh, we did, had 900 students out doing something uh, pretty much uh, all, after, all morning and part of the afternoon. Um, each of those students have to, they come back, they don't have to, they come back and they do uh, a debriefing with their group and then they write about it so they can have a reflection part of it. And then they're all accumulating uh, community service hours. We, we uh, made it, uh, I think it was in February, is when we decided that it, in order to graduate from Beach Grove High School, you have to have community service hours. If you're a senior this year, it's 20 hours. Juniors are 40. Sophomores are 60. And freshmen are 80 hours. So over, over a course of a four-year period, our students have to uh, have 80 hours in community service in order to uh, graduate. Uh, we also have a calendar that's up there on our website that if you have a business or you have a church or something that you want uh, community service, you need some help, you can go up there and post it. I need this amount of uh, students for this amount of time, and this is where you go. And, and uh, it's, it's worked out well as, as uh, uh, created by Ms. Uh, Ms. Banks. So uh, there's a lot going on at the high school, but community service uh, is really important to us, and we want to continue doing that. It'll be happening next year, too, every year from here on out. Uh, that every fall and every spring, we'll be doing community service. And I better put one more plug in. Tomorrow's uh, educate, I mean, it's election day. Go out and vote. We all want people to get out and vote. Have a great day, and thank you. Thank you. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, where'd you get the book at? Uh, Borders Bookstore down in uh, Greenwood Mall. I think it's Borders. Um, down there? Yeah. In the mall. In the mall, yeah. yeah right, okay. off, right off the mall. All right, thank you. You bet. Sir? Yeah. I just want to tell you one thing. The kids that's come over here since I think John's boy was the first, mm -hmm. um, I've been very, I think most of us have been very impressed with. You, and, and one night we had a young lady that talked quite a while. Mm -hmm. But you know what? She it was never a boring moment. She was very excited. Well, she was very, it was, it was a great and that, I think that same night there was a three-piece band, yes. or, or, yeah. or and those guys were great. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, yeah. I like the kids coming and. Well, I on. thank you, thank you. And, <laughs> and hey, actually, that was a subtle. Hint. At, at yeah. first, <laughs> yeah. At first, they um, uh, they're a little scared, you know, when they first came over. Uh, but when we started bringing the band night, that we I went there and I was talking to the band people because usually you have either academic people or athletic people uh, that came. And I went to the band. I said, "Hey, we'd like to have somebody come speak." Uh, and you know, then they started talking. Well, can three of us just play? And I said, "Sure." And then somebody else came along and said, "Hey, would you like to speak a little bit?" And she said, "Oh yeah, I'll talk about what's going on." And so. Um, uh, they, do, they do a great job. We're very, very proud of them. And you probably won't see me again until maybe next year at this time when it comes around AP test. I'll make sure I have some students here and maybe some song. You know, we have a great choir. Maybe I'll have them come sing. So any other questions? No, just another comment. You know, I'm a staunch supporter. Okay. You guys do a fantastic job. Appreciate that, thank you John. for what you've done with my kids. Thank you. Uh, Greenscape Commission report is on file. Uh, Mr. Webb with the RDC got a hold of me right before the meeting started, said he couldn't attend this evening. Uh, there's no ABC report this evening. Uh, is there a public safety? Did the public safety committee meet, Mark? Yes. I don't have a report okay. on it. Uh, I don't know if we copied that report hey, buddy. or not. Do you have any comments on what was discussed? Please. Good evening, Council. Uh, the public safety meeting met Wednesday, April 29th. 
9 a.m. here at City Hall. The members present was the fire chief, Debbie Springer, and myself. The fire department is working on getting their uh, fire truck bid at the amount that uh, the council wants them to have it at. They said they're getting close to it. They are also reworking bid or bids for re-outfitting the ambulance, not buying a new one, but a, a rebuilt one. They're accepting applications for new firefighters. They're working on a program to get AEDs throughout the city, all the uh, public buildings, and they're also uh, some of their older AEDs they are going to loan out to the Little League and the softball field during uh, the, that season. The uh, police department has already closed our applicants and we did physical tests last week for the applicants and those that are moving on will be doing written tests. Uh, on Saturday we'll be doing it at the uh, middle school. We had approximately 80 plus applicants and now we think we're down to like 37 that were able to pass the physical part of it. Uh, May is Fallen Officer Memorial Month. Uh, May 1st we had a memorial down in Indianapolis. <coughs> May 15th and that week is when Washington DC honors all the fallen officers from last year and officers that have not been recognized. We're gonna send four or five officers to DC to honor our three and all the other officers that have fallen over the years. Uh, the Little League Parade occurred last Saturday, which was a rain out date. Uh, as I understand, there were no problems with the parade. The person that was wanted from the Walmart shooting last June, he has been apprehended. He was found on the west side of Indianapolis. And recent news that wasn't in this meeting, I'll let you know that the Greenwood rapist suspect, he was caught this Saturday here in Beach Grove without any incident and all, he was turned over to the Greenwood Police Department so they could investigate their crime. He was a Beach Grove resident? Yes. He was a registered sex offender through Greenwood but lived up here so as, it was a good thing that he was caught. He, was, he came out of the woods after he tried to uh, uh, kill himself, we believe. Uh, let's see. There is, we were asked to look into a phone app for ongoing or runs that are going to the police department. Indianapolis is doing that as an experiment, so we're going to look into that. I'm not sure what the cost would be, so we're going to look into a phone app to where Police runs are up to date going out. I'm not sure what can be done, but we're going to let Indianapolis do that initial part of it. The police department is having a blood drive to honor fallen officers. That's going to be Saturday, May 16th at the police station. The blood bank uh, mobile bus will be there. It's going to be from 8 in the morning to 11 in the morning and we'll invite anybody that can donate to do that. We'd appreciate it. The, let's see, May 23rd is Veterans Day Ceremony, which will be at Sarah Bolton Park. It'll be at 10.30 a.m. And that's what we had for our meeting. Questions or comments from council members? Have, they, have you, um, do you know uh, of any Warrants or, or not warrants, what we call warning tickets or tickets that have been issued for panhandling. Has that happened yet? We do not issue so called warning tickets. We might give a verbal warning, and I don't know if any ticket has been written for panhandling. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking, I've had several people, and I've seen it myself, complain to me, especially about a man and a woman constantly at Walmart and work in the interstate. And one, well, for about a week, and this wasn't the same guy, there's a guy standing out in the median at 
Thompson, yeah, Thompson and, Emerson. and Emerson. Oh, he's standing right there in the middle. Yeah. And then he was working the Franklin side. So I don't know if we run him off or not. But uh, the police went down there and told him that was not the correct place to stand. Okay. So he did go to their side. Yeah. And as far as uh, on the Beach Grove side, they have to be a certain distance from the intersection and not approach anybody. And that that reason is because that's what we have found out to be a lot of court decisions that you can't restrict people too much, but our ordinance allows us to do that. And it's, as far as I know, it's not been tested yet. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for the police chief? All right, Mark, thank you. Police chief. Um, financial report. Good evening, counselors. We closed on the lease purchase agreement for the new four new police cars. As I stated before, we used the HELP program that is state approved and Indiana Bond Bank handled the bid process for us. The $12,729.18 biannual payments will begin in September of this year and will be paid each year in March and September, ending in March 2020. As you might recall, U.S. Bank was the low bidder. We made a payment this month on the skid steer. That was our third payment, and like the majority of our other lease purchase agreements, it is a five-year lease. It will end in March of 2019. I have been reviewing a draft of the city's fiscal plan prepared by Jeff Peters. I will compare his figures with mine, and then sometime in June, Jeff, Dennis, and I will meet to discuss it, as we have done the past three years. Tonight, all of you have ordinance number nine, subsection G, that states the clerk treasurer is the only person who can authorize and make payments for PERF. I am not sure who put this ordinance together, but I was not consulted on it, and I do perform these, I do not perform these tasks. AccuPay files and makes payments to PERF on behalf of the city of Beach Grove, so I would ask you to amend this accordingly. In March of 2013, AccuPay offered to add these tasks to their services at no additional cost to the city. At about the same time, PERF changed the rules from filing monthly or quarterly <coughs> to filing biweekly, with penalties and late charges added if not completed within one week of each payroll. It was a good business decision to allow them to add the responsibility to payroll because it cut the workload in the office and did not add any additional expense. I might add that I am not aware of any recent clerk treasurers that have personally filed PERF reports and or made payments to PERF. In the same ordinance, Section J, it mentions that the clerk treasurer is the only person who can certify salaries, which I believe to be unnecessary because if you look at the certification form, which I file each January, it states, must be signed by the clerk, treasurer, controller, or trustee. The city of Beach Grove does not have a controller or trustee. The city website continu continues to grow and is a great asset to the citizens. Community events can be added free of charge by emailing me at dan.mcmillan at beachgrove.com. Thanks to the website volunteers who continue to keep it updated at no cost to the taxpayers. <laughs> Financial reports, debt service, bank balances, and more can be found on the city website at www.beachgrove.com. Last month, we averaged almost 40,000 hits on it. Uh, the bank balances are listed below on the report I gave to the council tonight, and they'll be on the website in the morning. As always, if you have any questions, my door is always open. Thank you, Dan McMillan. Questions or comments for the clerk? If not, one more uh, report, Compliance Division. Derek? Uh, good evening, Council. As you can imagine, um, the weather's improved. As a result, uh, we've seen quite a few uh, violations come in. Uh, during the month of April, we found eight, uh, 122 addresses with violations. That more than doubles our total to the year. Um, so we're quite busy. Um, good thing is most people are cleaning up after their first 
uh, inspection. <coughs> um, of the ones we did reinspect, 57 already had cleaned up, and seven, only seven, were awaiting their second reinspection. Uh, we did issue five citations to residents or, or businesses in the city. A um, couple, couple new things. Uh, we've worked, started working with Marion County Zoning. Uh, some problems that we can't handle that are outside our jurisdiction. For instance, uh, zoning violations with swimming pools came up as be a popular thing over the past couple weeks. Um, so we forwarded them on to them, and then they take care of it because it's a Marion County zoning violation, not a Beach Grove ordinance violation. Uh, we had 29 signs we took from the right-of-way, and we reported another 31 vehicles to the police for being abandoned or inoperative. <coughs> Um, one little correction to this, in the year to date, uh, there's a comment that says 128 second warning sent. That should say 128 second inspections completed. Uh, just a little, we've only sent maybe uh, two dozen second warnings because the vast majority of our residents uh, fix their problems on the first uh, <coughs> notice, probably about 90%. Uh, any questions? Questions or comments for uh, compliance? Yeah, I got. I don't know if this has anything to do if you or not. Have you ever noticed people put these signs on telephone poles mm -hmm. and all that? Isn't that illegal? Yeah, that's what I. That's when they say that twenty nine signs were removed. Oh, that's okay. me taking those down. Uh, the most of those you see, for instance, the zero down eight hundred twenty five a month gets you a two hundred fifty thousand dollar mansion right. signs. Uh, most of those don't last a day. Um, I've got in touch with the vast majority of those folks that put those up. And uh, if I do find one, usually the response to me is, that guy shouldn't have put that up in Beach Grove. I know I'm going to lose it the next day anyway. Um, so that's why you don't see them in our city anymore. You see them just outside. For instance, a good example would be the corner of Thompson and Emerson. You can see the difference between Beach Grove and Indianapolis by where those signs are. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Derek, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That completes committee reports under unfinished business. Uh, General Ordinance Number Three, 2015, is up for third and final reading. I'll ask the clerk to read it into the record, please. General Ordinance Number Three, 2015, is an ordinance that amends Article Nine of the Personnel Manual for the City of Beach Grove concerning sick leave. Whereas full-time employees, regardless of what department they are assigned, unfortunately get injured and may receive an exposure which causes illness while under the scope of employment. And whereas full-time employees in every department, with the, with the exception of the police and fire departments, are required to take sick time should an injury or illness occur while under the scope of their employment. And whereas employees, especially new employees, may not have accrued ample sick time to protect themselves in the event of an on-the-job injury causing loss of wages and whereas part-time employees and elected officials are not eligible for sick day benefits and accumulation of sick time. Now therefore be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual Article 9 Sick Leave Section 2 use of sick leave. Now therefore be it further ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment be inserted into the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Article 9, Section 2, Use of Sick Leave. Add the following new paragraph. Number 4, no sick days will be charged against any full-time employee if they are injured or become ill as a result of an exposure while under the scope of their employment. For police officers police officers and firefighters, this would constitute a class one or two covered impairment as set out in Indiana Code 36-8-8-12.5. For all other full-time employees not covered under the Indiana Code, the same benefit will apply. This benefit shall not exceed more than 180 calendar days without consultation with the city's appointed physician approved. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning sick day benefits for full-time employees. Now, therefore, be it or further ordained that this ordinance only applies to the amending of Article 9 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately upon passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. 
um, general ordinance number three, 2015, is up for third and final <coughs> reading. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Please uh, register your vote. General Ordinance Number Four, 2015, is up for third and final reading this evening. At this time, I will ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. General Ordinance Number Four, 2015, is an ordinance that amends Article Five of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning health insurance for full-time employees who become disabled as a result of their employment. Whereas full-time employees unfortunately become injured or suffer an exposure that could result in the separation of their employment and whereas such employees who unfortunately have to retire as a result of an injury or exposure should have access to health insurance benefits and whereas currently the city's personnel manual calls for the membership fees to be covered by the city but needs better clarification and whereas part-time employees and elected officials are not eligible for this benefit now therefore be it ordained that the common council desires to amend article 5 section 1 subsection c 1 b of the city of beach Grove personnel manual concerning health insurance benefits for full-time employees who become disabled as a result of their employment now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment be added to the City's Personnel Manual. Article 5, Section 1, Subsection C, 1B, delete in its entirety and replace with the following. B, should a full-time employee of the City of Beach Grove receive an injury or exposure while under the scope of employment, which causes such employee to become disabled, and separate from employment, the city shall proceed with a pay for health and other medical and insurance coverage as follows. One, 100% 1 of the individual health insurance coverage at the current employee rate till they are eligible for Medicare benefits. Number two, 100% of the members deductible for individual coverage should the member participate in a health savings account. Any amounts paid by the city per the HSA shall be offset by any monies paid to the member to satisfy the deductible. Three, 100% of the individual dental insurance, if the employee has the dental plan at the time of the impairment, will be covered for one year only. A premium for individual life insurance of $10,000, as it does for all other retired employees. Five, if the employee has additional health insurance coverage, child, spouse, through the city of Beach Grove, the member will have the option to continue paying that premium at the employee rate. Six, the employee shall be responsible for the payment of the premium and deductible amount if any family coverage not covered under the plan design. Should the employee obtain his or her own health insurance by other employment or otherwise, the city shall cease his or her individual coverage and other health insurance coverage. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove's personnel manual concerning health and other benefits for full-time employees. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to Article 5, Insurance for the City of Beach Grove personnel manual, and not any other portion of the manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. General Ordinance uh, Number 4, 2015, is up for third and final reading. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Please uh, register your vote.
Funeral Ordinance Number 6, 2015, is up for second reading only this evening. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. General Ordinance Number 6, 2015, is an ordinance that amends Article 10, Special Lease, Section 2, Funerals of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Whereas full-time employees are on a set schedule and unfortunately tragic events happen that cause employees to be off work, and whereas unfortunately loved ones of employees may pass requiring special arrangements to be made by the full-time employee, and whereas depending on the circumstances, employees may need more time off than currently is given pursuant to the city's personnel manual. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning time off for bereavement. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the following amendment be placed in the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Article 10, Special Leave, Section 2, Funerals. Delete in its entirety and replace with the following. Section 2, Funerals. All full-time employees will be granted up to three calendar days per occasion with no loss of compensation or accruals to attend the funeral of his or her spouse, children, mother, father, sister, brother, or significant other. All full-time employees shall also be granted three calendar days per occurrence with no loss of compensation or accruals to attend the funeral of a father-in-law, mother-in-law, stepfather, stepmother, grandparents, grandchildren, or a permanent member of the immediate family not mentioned above. Should additional bereavement time be needed, a full-time employee shall be permitted to use up to three additional calendar days of accumulated <coughs> sick leave with the approval of their respective department head. Elected officials and part-time employees are not eligible for this benefit. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Coast Personnel Manual concerning bereavement leave. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall only apply to Article 10 of the City of Beach Coast Personnel Manual and shall not apply to any other regulation. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately upon passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. General Ordinance Number 6, 2015 is up for second reading only. Approval. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We'll hear this on third and final reading at the June 1st meeting. Thank you. General Ordinance Number 7, 2015 is up for second reading only. This time I will ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. <clears throat> General Ordinance Number 7, 2015 is an ordinance that amends Article 14 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning residency requirements for full and part-time employees. <coughs> Whereas, it is recommended to all employees that they reside in the jurisdiction that they are employed in, and whereas employees can reside outside of the City of Beach Grove should they choose to, and whereas the state statute concerning residency requirements for sworn police officers and firefighters states that they have to live in the county they work in or a county that touches the county they work in. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning residency requirements for full-time and part-time employees. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment be inserted in the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Article 14, Employee Behavior, Section 2, delete in its entirety and replace with the following. Residence, Section 2, Residency Requirements. Within 180 days of hiring as an employee of the City of Beach Grove, this employee shall continuously reside in Marion County or any other contiguous county. This includes all full-time, part-time employees. For police officers and firefighters pursuant to the Public Employees Retirement Fund shall already be in compliance with this regulation. All other employees hired from this point forward shall reside within the guidelines. Now therefore be it further be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove personnel, personnel manual to reflect this amendment. 
Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to the above mentioned changes in the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately after passage by the Common Council, <coughs> signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and <coughs> signed by the Mayor. Thank you. General Ordinance Number 7, 2015, is up for approval on second reading only. This time, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will hear it on third and final reading at the June 1st meeting. Thank you. <coughs> General Ordinance Number 8, 2015, is up for second reading only this evening. And at this time, I will ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. General Ordinance Number 8, 2015, is an ordinance that amends Article 4, Section 6 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual pursuant to minimum call-ins. Whereas full-time employees often are called in to work for a variety of reasons, including weather, public events, and to mitigate emergency situations, and whereas the public safety budgets reflect an appropriated amount to pay for overtime activities and staffing levels, and labor agreements already call for the hour amount listed below. And whereas the employees of the Department of Public Works do not have an appropriation for overtime in their budgets, so they are compensated through the comp compensatory time only. And whereas documentation is required through attendance records concerning overtime work and payroll documentation. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Article 4, Section 6 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the following amendment be placed in the Personnel Manual. Article 4, Section 6, Minimum Call-In, delete in its entirety and replace with the following. Section 6, Minimum Call-In. A full-time employee who has completed a regularly scheduled workday asked to stay over and or is called in to work in an emergency situation without prior notice shall be paid for a minimum of three hours. If the emergency call-in takes more than three hours, the employee shall be compensated for time spent. Minimum call-in will be paid at the extra duty rate established for each individual employee. An employee who is called in to work prior to his or her regular reporting time shall be compensated for a minimum of three hours at the extra duty rate. In the event the minimum call-in or regular working hours overlap, the regular hourly rate shall be paid for overlapping hours in addition to the minimum call-in. Compensation shall be paid either through normal payroll or by <coughs> compensatory time. Department staffing's needs, budgets, and financial considerations shall determine whether extra duty time is paid or compensatory time is given. The employee shall be notified of the type of payment given prior to the employee accepting the overtime hours unless the overtime is a result of having to stay over. Part-time employees and exempt full-time employees are not eligible for overtime benefits. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual pursuant to minimum calling compensation. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies <coughs> to Article 4 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual and no other portion of the manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. General Ordinance uh, number 8, 2015 is up for approval on second reading. At this time I'll ask for a motion to approve on second reading only. I'll make that motion. Motion made a second. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same sign. We will hear it on third and final reading on June <coughs> the 1st. Thank you, Council. That concludes unfinished business. Under new business, we have several items. The first is resolution number four, 2015, calling for the deletion of the Main Street Revolving Loan Program. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to read the resolution into the record, please. Resolution number four, 2015, is, is an ordinance that calls for the elimination of the Main Street Revolving Loan Program. Whereas the City of Beach Grove established the Main Street Revolving Loan Program to assist businesses in the City's Main Street Business District 
by providing low interest loans and whereas several businesses situated in the city's Main Street Business District applied for and received low interest loans and whereas while some of the businesses who were recipients of the Main Street loans made timely and successfully paid off the principal and interest of their loans while others did not and whereas the city's legal department spent countless hours sent demand letters to the businesses who were behind and had defaulted and requested immediate payment of the balance of the loan. The city's financial advisor had to work with the clerk treasurer to clean up, organize, and audit the program to determine balances, payments, and who was delinquent. And whereas some of the businesses who defaulted have either filed bankruptcy or otherwise insolvent, therefore making repayment of the loan impossible, costing the city over $225,000 as of this presentation. Currently, there are seven remaining loans outstanding, of which three have either defaulted or in the process of filing bankruptcy <coughs> or are awaiting court orders. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove finds cause to discontinue the Main Street Revolving Loans Program pursuant to IC 36-1-8-5, the funds currently in the account designated for the Main Street Revolving Loan Program shall be transferred into the city's rainy day fund with the exception of $7,500. Likewise, any future monies generated from the Main Street Revolving Loan Program plus the 7,500s should be placed into a new appropriation to pay for future litigation concerning outstanding loans and impending legal orders concerning the Main Street Revolving Loan Program. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, instructs the clerk treasurer to <coughs> discontinue the Main Street Revolving Loan Program. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this resolution only applies to the Main Street Revolving Loan Program. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this resolution shall go into effect immediately after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the clerk treasurer, and signed by the mayor. Thank you. The uh, floor is open for questions, comments, or council members. It says that we're currently going to save uh, 75. Sorry, I was playing. We're going to keep out $7,500. How much is in the uh, in the uh, fund currently? Is it a substantial amount? About 160,000 ballpark. Okay. I can tell you exactly. No, that's close enough. All but right. Was it was, was it just poorly done? What what is our main? What was the main? Problem. I, I know several of the people that are outstanding. I, that's not my question. What went wrong? Because I think this is a great idea. It was just poorly managed and run into the ground. Well, in my opinion, uh, there was several things wrong with it. Number one, there was not sufficient collateral for what would actually happen. Let's say a PNC bank was the one that gave their, the money and then we matched it. By the time PNC got done with going after the money, there was nothing left. Uh, there, there was just a lot of issues with it. Uh, right now, they could probably go out and get money from a bank cheaper than what they could get on this low interest uh, loans. You know, that's what they call it. But uh, uh, there, there was never sufficient collateral for any of the loans that was done. Could could this be tweaked and saved? It's not a bit, even though they can go, if they can't go out, I don't want to close the door on any Main Street businesses that could possibly benefit from this. Can it be fixed? Uh, I'll just say from the track history, well, I, my I, answer I, would be no. Uh, I guess anything could be fixed, but... Uh, I just think we've had more bankruptcies, you know. Everybody has had more bankruptcies. Right. The, the economy tanked. It's but the, the problem being is, I guess the main thing is whatever the bank would require in collateral, I think the city should get additional collateral. And I don't know how many Main Street merchants would have the collateral that would guarantee their money other than what the bank requires. So in other words, if you own two properties and you want to put one up for collateral from the bank right. and one from the city, 
then I guess that would be an yeah. option. But, but again, why would you do that if you could go and get it cheaper? cheaper? Exactly. How many people are, if it be, what's the downside to not closing this? Not switching the 160 over to the rainy day fund? If we're, if we're gonna leave it open and just try to make it better, what's the downside? If nobody's gonna use it anyway, I, I don't, I'm not ready to shut this down. I think there's some legitimacy to it still. In January of 2012, since we came into office, we have not loaned one penny on it. And uh, my opinion would be they'd have to have awful, awful big amount of collateral for me to consider it. I'm not the determining factor. We don't even have a seven member commission intact and that's, I don't know if there ever was one or who made the determining decisions because we have not loaned a penny. That's all the questions I have. Uh, yeah, um, I would just like, there's several issues I see with this. First of all, this is a resolution, it's not an ordinance, so the ordained need to be changed, obviously, to resolve. Um, second, that this wasn't properly noticed. Um, there was nothing on the website. There was no link to it. I was getting several complaints that a lot of constituents could not locate this exact document. They had no idea it was being voted on tonight. And since this is a resolution, just being voted on one time, it's very, very imperative that we get citizens of Beach Grove this information before we vote on it, not after the fact. So in the future, I would like to see these, at least the resolutions, uh, if not the ordinances, <coughs> on the agenda before we vote on it. Um, second, I, I want to echo John here. Um, this is a, a great program, I think, that if it's used correctly, um, that it can really benefit and bring business in, into the city of Beach Grove. And uh, there's been several other, I just did limited research on it, there needs to be more done, um, several other cities in the state of Indiana and in the nation that have used similar programs successfully. And I think that it's something that we need to look at. We need to get, reach out to maybe some of those cities um, and find out what they're doing and tweak ours um, to where it's a successful program and not a, 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 a drain on the uh, city. That's all. And uh, Anthony, in all due respect, uh, every piece of legislation concerning the Main Street Loan Program, even when they created the Main Street Loan Program, was through a resolution. There wasn't one ordinance ever introduced concerning the Main Street Loan Program. It was all resolution with one reading. Right. I'm not, I'm not disputing that fact at all. I'm just saying when you draft a resolution, you're not supposed to put ordained all over it's supposed to put resolved. I mean, that's just, that's basic stuff right there. So I would just like to see consistency. I'd like to make a comment on, he brought that up about the uh, city website. And city website is a very good place to go to find these things. But before I became clerk treasurer, they were never on the city website and they were presented at meetings without anybody knowing. Uh, you know, it was just a time thing that happened this time. That's probably the latest they were done this afternoon. That's probably the latest since I've been in office that they have been put on there. But anyway, they were never done previous to me becoming clerk treasurer. Right, yeah, you know, I thought that they, I thought they were usually on there. That's why I think I sent you an email as yes. soon as I found out. Right. To have that put up. And I, and make, I understand that. Yeah, I just want to make sure they're up. I want it out there. But I'll take responsibility for it not getting done in a timely or manner. Should we put this up so they can see it before we vote on it? I, I, I had to scan it and send it to the people that I, I know. I say I never I, got a phone call on it. on it, so I don't know. Uh, but that don't necessarily mean people didn't have questions on it. Any other questions or comments? I have a comment, I guess. Given the fact that maybe there's some school of thought to do uh, at least some tweaking to the program, and I know we had this discussion a while back when we first talked about it, and now all of a sudden let's just get rid of it. Could we not to push it down to this year, the end of this year, next year, or whenever, but could we put a time frame on having someone research this, see if it's feasible to try to 
change this program and then rather than just blanketly dissolving it but we have to put like a strict time frame like 60 days in 60 days we'll figure out if we're going to keep this or not fix it or not is that possible Kathy the last time this was brought up and I believe it was in 2012 uh, they tabled it for one year and that's the first time it's been brought well that's why I'm up. saying like 60 days just it has to I mean we can't just keep dragging it out now, Re now. regardless is whether or not they if we if we don't kill it this evening if nobody comes up with enough collateral nobody's gonna get a loan anyway Right. So if we let this live, if we let this $160,000 in the loan system, if we the Main Street Revolving Loan Program, if we don't kill it this evening, then it lives. And if anybody ever wanted to use again, it would have to be tweaked. It would have to be better than what it is right. now. But so if we just don't kill it tonight, uh -huh. then it lives on for somebody to have to deal with it. But I'm saying, like, let's not just let it linger. Let's put a, a time on it. Like, it has to be tweaked or it has to be gone within 60 days, 90 days. So that we're forced to act on it. Because, I mean, like he said, and I know this is true, that we <coughs> said we were going to table it for a year and nothing ever got done with it. I mean, other things came up. It's kind of Does anybody, was, I guess this silly question, this was just for businesses on Main Street. No, no, no. There's no, somebody on Emerson's Grove. And I just, if, I, my, my, I don't know. My Say feeling it. on it is, 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 I for one have tried to get a business loan years ago. It's very hard to do, and and if I wanted to get a hundred thousand for say for a business, I don't know if I'd want to come to the city and. Get an equal match of a hundred thousand, because I agree with Dan. I mean, or even John, you, you'd have to have one hell of a lot of collateral. Initially, uh, initially this was brought up to revitalize Main Street. Yeah, that was the whole reason we did it, was so we could help businesses, and they did it at an awful time, because it, sixty percent of them went, and we lost our tail on it. But, but was that? through the fault of the economy or was it just poor business the economy well in my opinion and that's only opinion the economy because i i know of one i know of one that was just poor business okay Craig. this loan program has been a complete unmitigated disaster bottom line it needs to be said right now the vetting process for the people who got this, these loans were either non-existent or they were giving, given very freely. Uh, I, I will say with the same thing that Dan did is that if anybody came to the city for one of these loans, it would be heavily scrutinized. And I think they'd get a much deal, much better deal from a bank. I, I understand that, and that's, that's not in question. The question is, do we kill this? Do we shut this down? I think we ought to get out of the loan business. That's my opinion. I don't have a vote. But well, if, if we don't kill it and we got 264,000 sitting that could potentially be used for betterment of the city anyway, I well, don't know why we wouldn't kill it because David, we'll never make a loan. It would go into the rainy day fund and the rainy day fund, the only way any of these funds could come out of that rainy day fund is with council approval. It's just but the mayor they, couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Okay, but it what would, could they be used for? Well, I mean, you guys could use it for whatever you want if you so choose to do so. It could go towards a tax anticipation warrant, lower than that if you wanted to. But at the same time, it could go towards something beneficial instead of just sitting there. Absolutely. You could do paving. You could do whatever you wanted. Uh, but it still takes council approval to pull it out of the rainy day fund. Any other further comment or questions? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve resolution number four, 2015. I'll make said motion. Second? Second. If you go to you. And uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three, three, aye. Can we have a voice? Sorry. Yeah. Voice we'll go ahead and uh, do a uh, 
a single vote, starting on my far right. Your question is? Uh, there was a motion to approve this resolution. It was seconded. And all in favor, aye. Dave? No. No. John? No. Aye. No. Aye. No. So it is defeated four to two. Okay. General Orders number 9, 2015 is up for first reading only. This time I will ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record plate. Yes. Okay. General ordinance number 9, 2015 is an ordinance that amends Article 5, Section 4 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning the Public Employees Retirement Fund. Whereas the city has been a participant in the Indiana public retirement system since 1960, <coughs> excuse me, 1967, and whereas public safety departments are classified as INPRS police officers, firefighters and all other employees are considered INPRS public employees and whereas, whereas having adequate pension plans for employees attracts good applicants who in turn become good employees and whereas the City of Beach Grove desires to continue to be participating members of the Indiana public retirement system. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning Section 4. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment be added to the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Article 5, Section 4, delete in its entirety and replace with the following. Indiana Public Retirement System, Subsection A, the City of Beach Grove, choose to become a participant in the Indiana public retirement system and shall abide by all the rules and re regulations associated with being a participant. Subsection B, the City of Beach Grove agrees to make the required contributions under the Indiana public retirement system concerning the city's contribution and on behalf of each eligible employee and elected officials and any related matters subject to state statute. Subsection C, all full-time employees shall be enrolled in the Indiana Public Retirement System. Subsection D, the following elected officials shall be eligible for enrollment into the Indiana Public Retirement System, Mayor, Clerk, Treasurer, and City Judge. Subsection E, part-time employees, seasonal employees, and contract employees, and all elected officials not listed in subsection D are not eligible for enrollment in the Indiana Public Retirement System. Subsection F, if an employee resigns on his or her on a, own accord, the employee's tenure is terminated as of his or her's last working day. If the employee is later rehired, he or she shall be considered a new employee. Subsection G, all full-time employees other than police officers and firefighters are eligible for membership as a public employee in the Indiana Public Retirement system, the state of Indiana, Indiana public retirement system on a yearly basis makes such, makes such determination on what percentage of wages the city of Beach Grove contributes into the Indiana public retirement system for each public employee's behalf. Each full-time employee should contribute a minimum of 3% of their gross wages into the Indiana public <coughs> retirement system. The clerk treasurer is the only person who can authorize and make any payment on behalf of the city of Beach Grove and any employee to the Indiana Public Retirement System. Any additional payments to the Indiana Public Retirement Fund by a full-time employee must be handled through the clerk treasurer. Subsection H, police officers and firefighters are members of the Indiana Public Retirement System police officers firefighters plan. The state of Indiana public retirement system on a yearly basis makes such determination on what percentage of their wages that the city of Beach Grove and such employee <coughs> makes towards their respective plan contribution. The contribution on behalf of the city of Beach Grove and each police officer and firefighters 
are spelled out in their respective collective bargaining agreements. The clerk treasurer is the only person who can authorize or make any payments on behalf of the city of Beach Grove and any employee to the Indiana Public Retirement System. Subsection I, the clerk treasurer is the only person who can certify the salary of a first class police officer and first class firefighter every year to the Indiana Public Retirement System. The clerk treasurer shall certify the base salary of a first class patrolman and first class firefighter each year prior to the first payroll or a specific date as prescribed by the Indiana Public Retirement System. The clerk treasurer also notes that the dates that the salary submitted go into effect. Subsection J, the calculation used to formulate the pension base for police officers and firefighters is as follows. The city of Beach Grove is established to be the base salary of first class patrolman and first class firefighter for the calendar year. Maximum longevity for 20 years and the amount of $100 per year work. These two sums totaling will be used as a basis for employer and employee contributions concerning police officers and firefighters remitted to the 1977 Police Officers and Firefighters Pension and Disability Fund on a ba payroll basis. The clerk treasurer is the only person who can sign the required documentation form and submit these figures. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual concerning the Indiana Public Retirement System. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to Article 5, Section 4 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, and tested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. The floor is open for questions or comments. <clears throat> Dan, is this what you had a question about? Yes. And also, do you have an amendment in mind? Uh, I think <clears throat> the easiest thing where it says the only person uh, is, it should say the clerk treasurer or his designee as to who I might have do that, whether it be Jeff Peters or uh, uh, AccuPay <clears throat> payroll company. Would that be legal, Craig? Calls for the, the Indiana Administrative Code calls requires the city controller or the clerk treasurer. If AccuPay is going to do this for free, would it be okay for Dan to direct them to sign these? I don't think that it matters. I, I mean, I don't think that it matters. I think it, it's pretty clear that it, it directs the clerk treasurer's office. It's an it, it, it's an entirety. I don't. So you don't believe we need to amend it that Dan saying that or should we amend this to say clerk treasurer or one of his designees? I make the emotion that we have it say what the attorney just said. <laughs> it would be the clerk treasurer, comma, or one of his designees, comma are the only persons who can sign the required documentation. Questions or comments? I'll second. I'll ask for a motion to, you made the motion? I did. <coughs> second? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll suppose the same sign. We'll include that in the first reading this evening. I ask oh, for a motion. Please to read it again. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Who seconded that, Dan? Uh, I said Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> um, general ordinance uh, number 9, 2015 is up for approval on first reading, including the amendment. I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion as amended. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll suppose the same sign. <laughs> June order tonight passes on first reading. We will hear it on second reading only at the June 1st meeting. Thank you, Council. <coughs> General order number 10, 2015 is up for first reading only. At this time, I'll ask the uh, clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. 
General Ordinance Number 10, 2015 is an ordinance that calls for the elimination of the Cumulative Capital Development Fund, whereas this fund was established by ordinance in July of 1985, <coughs> and whereas this fund helped raise funds for improvement in the park system, and whereas the mayor could have could, after declaring an emergency, use up to 25% of the CCD fund for public safety, and whereas with new ordinances for capital improvements in the park system, this funding mechanism is recommended not to be used. Therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the Code of Ordinances concerning Chapter 38, City Finance Taxation. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment occur. Chapter 38, City Finances Taxation be deleted in its entirety. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 38 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to Chapter 38 of the <coughs> Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove, no, no other ordinance. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect on January 1, 2016, after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Floor is open for questions or comments. Is there currently any money sitting in this fund? Not to my knowledge. Okay. If there was any money to be in this fund, where would it be transferred? Or do we believe that there is no money in this fund? I don't think there's any money in it. I motion we accept general ordinance number 10, 2015 as written. Second. There's been a recommended for approval, second by Councilor Mobley. All <coughs> those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same sign. Aye. Passes five to one. Was the upset? Uh, Anthony. Okay. We will hear this on second reading only at the June 1st meeting. Thank you, Council. Can we make sure there's no money in there? Yes. Thank I you. will Thank let you, you know. Yeah. Just for the next reading. Right. Yeah, no problem at all. Because we can admit it to put the money someplace of use. General Ordinance number 11, 2015 is up for reading on first reading only. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to read the ordinance into the record, please. General Ordinance Number 11, 2015, is an ordinance that amends Article 4, Extra Duty Compensation of the City of Beach Grove Person Personnel Manual concerning compensatory time. Whereas full-time employees may decide to take compensatory time in lieu of being paid to work over and above their normal shifts, and whereas employees of the Department of Public Works are required to take compensatory time in lieu of payments, and whereas there are no guidelines established by the City of Beach Grove concerning compensatory time, payments, record keeping, and cheap balances for employees' attendance records, and whereas the City of Beach Grove must have clear guidelines concerning the use and accumulation of compensatory time, now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Article 4 of the City of Beach Grove concerning extra duty compensation. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires the following amendment be added to the City Article 4 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Article 4, Section 1. <clears throat> extra duty time. Add subsection D, compensatory time. All full-time non-exempt employees of Beach Grove Police Department, Beach Grove Fire Department, and the Department of Public Works are eligible for overtime opportunities. Should an overtime opportunity present itself, eligible employees must be informed if the overtime compensation is for compensatory time only. Employees of the Department of Public Works are not eligible for monetary compensation. Compensatory time is earned at one and one-half times the hourly rate. Each hour worked and taken must be documented in employee's attendance record, guidelines under the Fair Standards, Fair Labor Standards Act shows that an individual employee can build up to 240 hours of compensatory time. However, respective department heads can enforce stricter balances of compensatory time. 
to ensure an efficient operation of employees, individual department heads are responsible for the documentation of all compensatory times, the procedures used to issue the compensatory time, and to keep a running spreadsheet of the amount of compensatory time balance is available for each employee under their supervision. Employees must have a clear understanding that staff levels and operating conditions come first when deciding when compensatory time can be taken. Compensatory time taken is based on when a request was made by the respective employee. Seniority of the employee requesting compensatory time is the factor on who has issued such time when two employees request, request compensatory time off at the same time. Should an employee retire and or leave employment, the City of Beach Grove must ensure that the employee has a zero balance of compensatory time. Respective department heads can issue guidelines as to how much compensatory time can be banked when an employee submits their retirement or resignation letter. Therefore, the city must compensate the employee for any compensatory time balance when an employee leaves employment. All compensatory time balances and procedures are subject to public inspection. Full-time exempt employees, part-time employees, seasonal employees, contract employees, and elected officials are not eligible for any overtime or compensatory compensation. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual pursuant to compensatory time. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to Article 4 of the City of Beach Grove Personnel Manual. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect immediately upon passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Clerk. The floor is open for questions or comments. I got a question to city legal. Isn't there something in state statute that determines, uh, like on compensatory time, if they would leave under one circumstance, let's say if they just quit, that they were not entitled to it, or if they retired, they was only a certain percentage? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? I, I don't, I'm not aware of it. I know that. It ordinarily would not be a wage in the Indiana wage payment statute unless you specify otherwise and that's what we're doing here so sometimes people accrue these large compensatory time banks uh, kind of like sick time where it clearly is not a wage unless you specify otherwise which the council is doing here which is a good thing I'm not saying that but it is a wage so it's got to be it's payable at the time of termination or retirement Uh, either fire chief, do you uh, can you speak on c compensatory time in your respective departments? Public works, that's all they give out. But how do you folks uh, deal with compensatory time? We do have compensatory time within the fire department. We do try to limit the hours because of the 24-hour shifts. Um, we do try to limit to 48 hours that you can keep in the bank. Um, being that compensatory time is received in lieu of overtime, we do make sure that the um, employee does receive all benefits once they retire, um, that they receive their compensatory time. So they bank it? You can bank it. Uh, they can bank up to 48 hours. So should we have in here somewhere that there's a cap? Well, the, the, uh, federal, uh, the FLSA guidelines, 240 hours for public safety employees, 480 for non-public safety employees. What happens if an employee gets fired? Do they get that? They still get that time. They it's earned time. They have to it's earned time. They it's, it's earned and said in lieu of overtime. Oh, okay. So we, we try to limit it just because of um, the situation we are in with manpower and staffing. Um, we can't afford to have so employees have a with huge a, a huge bank of, of comp time. So. Chief? Ours is they can have up to 180 hours until they notify us of their last year of employment. Then it has to drop down to 80. And they can't have over 80 hours at their retirement as long as they're in that year of notification they have to use it up school teachers are the same way they can only get paid for so many in the year <coughs> but they have 300 hours 
when they retire. The tops they can get paid for is 30 days. Any questions for the police or fire chief? So do we need to write this? Do we need to amend this? Or because state law supersedes it, we're okay? I would defer to is what it is we, we can't supersede that anyway so the law is the law well you can make it a wage is that what you're talking about no no do we need to write in a cap or because oh, cap. no it is what it is okay i'm so we don't have this for the dpw now right yes yes they they do not require whenever someone at dpw works overtime it is compensatory time only so this would give them overtime no, 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 no. They would still get compensatory time only. It's just we have to document that. We're, we're not doing a good job of documenting winning comp compensatory time. Oh. And the regulation needs to be updated. That's the purpose of this we're ordinance. Updating the system. Okay. Well, I guess my question would be is if Rob can do two days and Mark does, uh, what did you say, two two weeks, 80. 80 hours. I mean, how does that, if state statute still supersedes it, how do they get by doing it? I don't give any comp story time in my office, but I don't know. I guess if they've got caps on it, why couldn't the council put caps on it, I guess? The, the council could, could if they desire, but... I would leave that up to the respective department heads. They know better how to run their department than. We have allowed employees to accumulate more than 48 hours. We just try to get them down to that balance as soon as possible. Oh, I, have, I just wanted to know, if they leave and they have hours, then are they paid like a time and a half for those yes. hours, whatever they've banked? No, it's all straight time. Oh. Is it straight time? It's all straight time. Okay. Okay. It's just straight. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Now I'll ask for a motion to approve general ordinance number 11, 2015 on first reading only. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We'll hear it on second reading only on June the 1st. Thank you. General Ordinance number 12, 2015 is up for first reading this evening. Jeez. This time I'll ask the clerk to read it into the record, please. General Ordinance number 12, 2015 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 98 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Whereas compliance inspectors are currently conduct inspections pursuant to Chapter 98 of the Code of Ordinances, and whereas sometimes inspectors have to issue citations and or tickets for environmental problems concerning vacant properties, and whereas using only the Beach Grove Sewage Works database sometimes cannot obtain the required information to send correspondence to, and whereas the compliance division desires to properly notify property owners of inspection issues for cleanup. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 98 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires that the following amendment be added to Chapter 98 of the Code of Ordinances. Add the following to Chapter 98. 98.02, <coughs> illustrative enumeration. O leave or permit to remain outside of any dwelling, building, or other structure or within any unoccupied or abandoned building, dwelling, or other structure in a place accessible to children, any abandoned, unattended, or discarded ice box, refrigerator, or other container which has an airtight door or lid, snap lock, or other locking device which may not be released from the inside. 98.04, notice to abate, contents of notice. D, line five. If there is no active Beach Grove Sewage Works account, then notice shall be sent to any party having ownership of the property as on record with the Marion County Assessor's Office and or the Marion County Recorder's Office. 98.06, collection of fees, lien on property. 
B, line six, if there is no active Beach Grove Sewage Works account, that statements of expense shall be sent to any party having ownership of the property as on record with Marion County Assessor's Office and or the Marion County Recorder's Office. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 98 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. <coughs> now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to the above-mentioned chapter of the Code of Ordinances. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. This time I'll call uh, our compliance officer up to uh, uh, give us a little insight on the purpose of this ordinance, please. Okay, uh, there's really two, two changes in here. Um, the first was to the illustrative enumeration. Um, I believe we accidentally removed uh, the prohibition on abandoned ice boxes and the like when we removed the old Chapter 98 to replace it with this one. Uh, there is, it possibly could be covered under um, maintaining a property with the safety issue. However, I wanted to put it in writing uh, because I have found in the last year roughly 10 ice boxes sitting in people's uh, yards that children could possibly get into. So I just want to get it in there so it's obvious that you can't do that. Uh, the second part has to do with uh, vacant dwellings. Uh, as we know in Beach Grove, we have several dwellings that are currently under foreclosure. A lot of the cases, the banks have hired companies such as Safeguard to come in, maintain the lawn, and such. Uh, unfortunately, there are some homes where this is not the case, and the bank has let the home to its own devices. Uh, when I look up in the sewer record, which is the required presently, I will see the last owner on record is often being the homeowner that was foreclosed upon. Uh, one case I know of, the home hasn't been occupied since 2011, so someone who lived there four years ago by way of our current ordinance would be the one getting these violations and that's just not fair to them. Uh, who really needs to get these violations are the banks that own the mortgage over the home or who have completed the foreclosure process and now have possession of the home. And we can track that down using the Marion County's Accessor's Office or the Marion County Recorder's Office and find out who that is. And that way we can send them those, those notices and when we make um, or take efforts to abate those nuisances, then we can properly charge them for that. Have any questions? No, but thank you for the clarification. Thank no you. All right, thank you. Any further questions from council members or comments? <clears throat> if not, I'll ask for a motion to approve general ordinance number 12, 2015 on first reading only. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Aye. Who voted it? You and. I think it was Ed. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's funny shit right there. We will hear general orders number 12, 2015 on second reading only at the June 1st meeting. Thank you. General orders number 13, <coughs> 2015 is up for first reading only this evening. At this time, I will ask the clerk to read it into the record, please. General ordinance number 13, 2015 is is an ordinance that amends chapter 130 of the code of ordinances for the city of beach grove whereas on march 2nd 2015 the common council passed general ordinance 28 2014 whereas general ordinance number 28 2014 took effect on may 2nd 2015 and whereas certain notif notice provisions in the current version of general ordinance number 28 2014 are not practical now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 130 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires that the following amendments be added to Chapter 130 of the Code of Ordinances. Amend, excuse me, as, amend as follows. Title 8, General Offenses, Chapter 130.10, Illustrative Enumeration, Number 16, any business that requires more than 10 police runs in a calendar month to respond to a report of theft for a value of less than $50, the notice provision in Chapter 130.03 and 130.05 shall not apply. Upon receiving one police run in a calendar month under this section, the owner of the business and its local management shall be sent a notice either by personnel personal service or certified mail advising that an investigation has been commended. 
Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 130 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance only applies to the above mentioned chapter of the Code of Ordinances. Now, therefore, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President Pro Tem, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. Uh, before I open it up to the council comments, I'll defer to the, the uh, city attorney for uh, discussion. Yes, first, uh, somebody's got to make a motion. It should be commenced, not commended. Um, make that In any event, um, I had a discussion with the chief. Um, there's one particular business uh, that uh, we anticipate uh, is going to get these of these types of runs and when the when the council amended the ordinance to add this particular provision the current notice provisions don't work because they, based on the type of activity we're, we're trying to abate on some of these some of these properties and in this particular in this particular instance this business there's two no, there's two notice provisions there's you get a 20 day and a 10 day to abate so that puts us out 30 days so it makes this unworkable so just with regard to this particular provision, which is section 16, um, it changes the notice provisions just a little bit. That's it. Okay, the floor is now open for questions or comments from council members. So should we pass this as written, as, as amended, with just making it has been commenced? Correct. But other than that, the wording is correct, yep. and this is doing what we want it to do. You can, I, I think Chief, I, I shared this with Chief uh, before, I have prepared this, and I think uh, if he hadn't supposed to say anything else. Like Craig said, we had a meeting because our, our notices uh, could be too late. It's a 30-day notice that this has to go in, and the notices could last for 30 days. And it starts over in another month, which would expire. Uh, we have one business that we're running on runs with this for $3.72, where you tie up at least two officers for this, and this business gets their property back. $100 is what Indianapolis figures, one officer going to a business. And so if you're running two officers to this business, uh, the value of just the officer going is $200 for a $3.72, and it, it happens time and time again that they're tying up our resources. If I thought for sure this business said they had a pilot program that they were going to start that was going to save the world. That pilot program's on the river. We don't have a river. So, uh, I, I got a question for you. Um, John brought up a good point. Um, I think we all know who that one business is. Has there been any kinds of talk since we passed this, or they just kind of just sent their council that one time and threatened us and that was pretty much it after that one time there's not been any talks okay. that i know of it's a shame there i reached out to um the deputy corporation council for the city of indianapolis who's dealing with the identical problem uh, in indianapolis and um she essentially what this business has done is they've implemented this pilot program in three of their stores here in Indianapolis. I get the sense that the person who came here that one night left not very happy. No. And that's probably <laughs> at one particular counselor, uh, which I'm sure doesn't care, but in any event, uh, I don't think that pop program's gonna come anytime soon unless we force them to the table. And this will help? I think it, I think it absolutely will. I make the motion we pass hey, I got a. Oh. I need to amend it first, John. Oh. Uh, I need a motion to amend uh, the amend section 16, the last sentence, the last word, from commended to commenced. I'll make said motion. It's not has been commenced. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> has commenced? Not has been commenced? Has commenced. Has, has commenced. commenced. Thank you. Need a motion to strike Ben and commend and put in commenced. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Those opposed, the same sign. General Warrants number 13, 2015 is up for first reading only with the amendment. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll aye. make said motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will hear this on second reading only on the June 1st meeting. And any Thank other you. ordinance we can get to have him back in our building would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a gentleman from the American Legion in the back. Is, do you have business, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they are downstairs. Uh, can you just give us an update on what's going on? Uh, are you talking? Ron brought some flags in. Hey, don't you come here to present them to you. And Ron didn't show up, I guess. So. No, uh uh. But can you explain to the council what you gave us? The, the flags for the uh, roundabout? Mm hmm. And here at the uh, building here. Yes. yes. One 10 by 15 flag and one six by eight flag was brought in um, uh, a month or so ago uh, by the folks down at American Legion 276. Correct. So uh, he said they were going to come up last meeting for a presentation, but uh, I guess they ran too long. I don't know. Right. So. But anyway, on behalf of the city and the council and mayor's office, thank you very much. <coughs> Well, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. All right. That concludes new business. Uh, council comments beginning on my far right. Dave? Uh, let's all vote tomorrow and uh, have a uh, good weekend. Since it is public comments and I can say pretty much what I want, uh, please vote for yes twice for the school systems tomorrow. These are our kids. These are the kids that I preach about every month when you give me opportunity to talk about them. We need to keep, keep feeding, the, feeding the beast. The system has to have money. Everybody knows that. We have to keep them uh, funded. Uh, cutting their funding on some of the projects they have, I think, are going to take the legs out from right to school. As Mr. Cox said, they have FFA. They have guest speakers come in. My, my, my children are thriving in this system because they're able to teach, because their hands aren't tied with funding issues. Please vote yes tomorrow twice to continue Beach Grove school system at its best. Thank you. <clears throat> Ditto to what John said. And uh, just a reminder by Beach Grove Little League is in full swing. Uh, Come on down. They need your support. They have. They do have good food down there. They're great hot dogs, great steak sandwiches, and uh, Little League is not looking is is looking better than it's ever looked. And I've been around Little League since 1977. That parking lot is really making things a lot better down there. Last year at this time, I, I seen a guy get stuck up to his axle in mud and now it's not that way it's really looking nice and come down and watch my grandson and Anthony's son my grandson's batting 500 after two games and that's 400 percentage points better than he did last year <laughs> that's it it's good to see he's uh he's staying in there yeah he's yeah. staying in there this yeah. year <laughs> yeah. but, um i'd just like to congratulate uh joanne again i think that's a tremendous accomplishment state and national honors uh, to have you know that in Beach Grove, I think is is uh, speaks highly, really, of the city and and uh, our school system. Um, and uh, I just like to echo uh, Dave's comments on the Little League too. I think they got great ribeye sandwiches, in my opinion. Uh, thank you for coming out. I do want to make uh, one comment um, very shortly. I will be forming a subcommittee for the council uh, to go over, start going over the 2015 budget. Um, and you're welcome, or anyone, welcome to get on the committee. So, thank you. No comment. 
uh, thanks for coming. All right. This Thursday, May the 7th at noon, is the National Day of Prayer on the steps of City Hall. The public is invited to attend. And uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make second.